Hello, this is Mark from excelofthegrid.com and in this video we're looking at how we can sum the same cell across multiple worksheets. It's a really useful technique for when you have to aggregate a lot of worksheets that all follow a similar format. So if you're ready, let's get started. Have you ever had to sum the same cell across multiple worksheets? This often occurs where information is held in numerous sheets in a consistent format. Have a look at our example. Here we can see that we have a different tab for each month. So we can see that January, February, March, and in fact all the months have a consistent format. At the start we also have a summary sheet, so we can add up all the months in one go. So how can we do this easily? I've seen many examples, and you probably have too, where the user has effectively added up the same cell from every single worksheet by pressing the add sign between each item. But here's the problem. How do you know if you've clicked on every worksheet? Or what happens if you've missed one out by accident? There's really no way to tell unless you actually go through and check it. But the good news is that there's another approach a better approach that makes summing across multiple sheets easy. So let's take a look at this method. So I've got cell C5 selected. Then in the formula bar, I'm going to type equals the sum. Then I'll open my bracket. Now my first tab is called Jan for January. So I'll type Jan, then a colon, then DEC for December followed by an exclamation mark, and then the cell reference we want to sum, which is C5. Then when I close that bracket and press return, we've now added up every C5 from January to December. Now it is worth noting that if we have a space within our tab name, then we need to ensure that the tab names are enclosed within single quotes. So let me just show you this. So if my tab name was called January space, P1, and I come to my summary tab. If I click on cell C5, there you'll see that those sheet names are enclosed within single quotes. Let me change my tab name back, then head back to my summary sheet. This method of cell referencing follows the same absolute and relative references that we're used to. So if I have this cell here, C5, and that's looking at every C5 from January to December, if I drag that to the right, those formulas will update. And here in cell G5, we can see that we're looking up cell G5 from each of those sheets. So I can copy those cells and paste them down below. And there we go. I've created a simple summary sheet using 12 different tabs. There's another great technique that we can use here, and that's creating a start and end tab to act as bookends for our calculation. So let's try that. I'll create a new worksheet called start, and another worksheet called end. And I'll drag that to the end of March. It's important that these worksheets are blank and don't contain any values. So back to our summary sheet. Let's take that cell there. And rather than Jan to December, we'll go from start to end. Let's drag that along. Copy it down. Now what's great about this is that we can add or remove tabs from between our start and end tabs. So if I want to add in April, I just drag it in. Back to my summary sheet, and there we go. Our values are now updated. If you didn't see that, let's check that again. So the sales in cell C5 are 1788. And I take my May tab and drag that across. Click on the summary sheet. We're now at 2245, which means we can add and remove tabs from our calculation easily. So I've demonstrated this using the sum function. But actually, there's other functions we could use. Let's try it with the average function. A 
And now by using that, we can now have the average of the months that we have between our start and end cells. And here on the screen now, you can see the formulas that we can use with this method. There's lots there. Count, count A, max, min. There's so many that we can use. Okay, there's just a few things that I need to make you aware of. So first of all, as you could probably guess, all the sheets need to be in a consistent layout and they need to stay in a consistent layout. If the format of one worksheet changes, then it's likely that we won't be summing the correct cells. Secondly, with normal cell references, when we add in new rows or columns, the formulas update automatically. Well, this method doesn't work like that. So for example, if I were to take my February sheet and insert a new line, head back to my summary, as you'll see, we are still referencing only cell C5 on each of those sheets. The fact that February has changed is completely ignored. So let me take February back to how it was before. Now, if we want to insert a new row or a new column, what we need to do is select all of the sheets that are contained within our calculation. So I'll just take the end tab and move it to the end. Then if I select start to end and insert a new row, that new row will be inserted on all of the tabs. So when I come to my summary sheet, as you can see, that formula has now updated to reference cell C6. And that's because we selected all of the tabs before inserting the row. Finally, one more thing to make you aware of, and that's that even if we have hidden worksheets, they are still included within the calculation. So here we have our average between the start and end cells of value 449. If I select January through to June and hide those sheets, what you'll see is the summary value is still 449. It's still summing January to June, even though they are hidden. Right, that's all from me today. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, don't forget to subscribe, like and comment, and I'll catch you next time.